Right, we'll make a start because there is quite a lot to go through in this section. Thank you ever so much for joining us. Um, I'm not going to teach you how to score as such in terms of what the umpire will say and what to do. I'm going to teach you how to use play cricket to score. If you don't know your umpiring signals or not confident with that, I suggest there's plenty of like YouTube clips and that sort of thing you can watch just to make sure you know your umpiring signals. But I do think, here we go, fabulous. <laughs> or ask Peter and he'll send you <laughs> what he's got. Um, there's plenty to do, but usually the person that you're scoring with will be more than happy to help you. So this is all about really using play cricket to score. So I'll say it's a wide, assuming that you know what the signal for a wide is. As I say, if you don't, there is plenty of help on um, the internet for that. So on my screen, if you click on other matches at the bottom and click on demo match, we're going to go with a standard demo because we're playing counter cricket, so there won't be any pairs. Okay, and you should find that you end up with the match between the Worcestershire Rapids and the Essex Eagles. Okay, so we're going to work from here. Okay, I don't now, understand. Oh, okay, so we Siri doesn't understand. Sorry. Um, so if you were to score a normal, be scoring a normal match, this wouldn't actually be the first screen that you would see. You would see a screen that looked like this with your team selection on. Now, this is the point at which the managers um, will either do this themselves or they will ask for your help to do this. Now, I've just been through with the managers how to make sure that the Norfolk team is already in there and selected so you won't need to worry about the Norfolk team the difficulty comes with the team from the opposition and whether they're already in there or not and then I find that my for myself about half an hour before the match I'm running onto the middle of this pitch where the opposition coach is warming up their team saying please can I have a list of your players and they get a little bit flustered and say, oh, okay, and they sort of will show me their phone or something. Um, or I'll ask a parent on the side who's watching, just saying, oh, do you know your team? And usually they'll kind of scroll to an email that's got the list of players on. But it's really important that this sort of process starts 10 to 15 minutes before the match, because it's a real nightmare to try and score a match if you don't have the opposition team in there. So my one piece of advice to you, either the manager or the manager will delegate it to the scorer, um, is to at least 15 minutes before the start of the match to find the opposition team. Now, what you should have is um, a list of here, where it says player search is disabled, usually you will have a list of players. And hopefully those players will correlate to the players who are actually playing on the pitch. And then all you'll do is you'll select those players and you'll add them to the team. Um, if they're not there, there will be an option to put a custom player in. And you just press that and you just type in their name, um, their first name and their surname. And then you just add them to the team there. So as I say, because there is some um, sort of variation between how effectively the counties, other counties use play cricket, I would suggest you start this process 10 to 15 minutes early to make sure you get the team in. Once you get the team in, if you click on edit team, then you'll find a list of all the players that you've put in. So you might just want to go and check. And if the Norfolk team has had sort of a last minute change, someone's called off sick or something, you can actually then change players there. Um, you can also um, change your captain. You can change your wicketkeeper. So if you were to wanted to put in your wicketkeeper there, um, I could remove his role and say, actually, it's not this person here. This is the wicketkeeper. You can actually, if you're playing, especially in the younger groups where you've got more than one wicket keeper playing, you can make um, two wicket keepers. You can make three wicket keepers. Um, you can set as many players as you want as wicket keepers. So you can edit the team once you've put it in there. Um, and the same with the opposition team. You can edit their players there. You won't be able to go any further before you've selected a captain and a wicket keeper. But again, if you don't have that information, just select anyone. It's kind of their problem to sort out at the end of the game, not yours. So rather than kind of 
get really worked up and just think, well, I, I'm stuck now because I don't know who their captain wicketkeeper is. Just put anyone down and they can sort that out at the end. So once you've selected the teams, then if you click on done, it will then take you to this screen here, which is the settings. Now, again, the managers will have set up a lot of the match features in advance, which you shouldn't need to change. But for example, if the matches, there's rain at the start and the overs get changed, then you might need to change the number of overs. You may need to change um, things like um, the maximum number of overs someone can bowl, um, that sort of thing. So this um, screen here is a really good screen to make sure you get correct. And again, I often find myself running onto the middle of the pitch going, can I just check this? Can I just check this? And the, the umpires are usually quite a good source of information for this as well. Um, the top three, I wouldn't worry about. I just leave them as they are. Show full player names. I will always toggle that on because um, quite often, if you are sitting there and they don't know the name of the player, they might say, oh, it's Isabel, or you'll hear them go, come on, Isabel, wicket ball. And they think, oh, that's who's bowling. And then if you don't have their first name and you've got an Isabel and an India and an Ivy, and you've only got I someone, then um, I would always put the full player names on. I would always have this wagon wheels toggled off. Um, otherwise that means every time they hit a ball, you then have to fill in a little picture that shows where they've hit the ball to which can get really, you can get really flustered with that. So I would always toggle that off. Um, the external scoreboard, you shouldn't need to worry about that unless you're playing at somewhere like Great Melton where we've got an actual a little adapter where this will talk to the external scoreboard. You don't have to even then press the buttons to put the score in, but there aren't many places that have those. So I wouldn't worry too much about that one. Um, going down to match settings, can we all put, the overs to five. We're going to play a five over game. Um, we're going to have six balls per over. Uh, and as it's county level cricket, usually you will have a wide value of one and the same in the final over and a noble value of one. And then the, all the wides and nobles will be rebold. Um, occasionally, particularly a friendly match, you might change this to two and not rebold them but you can just toggle those on and off, okay? Again, if there's gonna be a retirement figure, you can put that in, but it doesn't matter. You don't have to put it in. You can still retire someone, even if you haven't put that in. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about everything else, um, but it's those top ones really, particularly the wides and nobles and how many overs that you need to make sure you've put in, okay? Um, so this would be all before the match starts. So again, you, you don't want to be trying to do this as the first ball is being bowled and the umpires are waving at you going, scorers, are you ready? You're like, oh, give me a second, I haven't done this. So try and get, um, I'd say at least 15 minutes before the start of play, everything set up for you. Um, you can't do this till you've got the teams in. It won't let you do this part of the match before you put the teams in, which is a bit frustrating. We have asked play cricket if they can change that. Um, but yeah, once you've got all of this information in there, you then click on match setup. So you can go through with us. And again, um, it's quite um, useful to get on terms with the umpires, introduce yourself. Um, they know who you are and they will then give you the necessary information. So usually the umpires will come off and say the Worcestershire Rapids won the toss and they've elected to bat. And you just put that information in there and then click on done and you'll get an option to either score ball by ball or score manually. Um, I would always choose score ball by ball. Score manually literally lets you put in the score at the end of the innings. The only time I've ever done this is when I arrived late to a match and the first innings had happened. So I put in the first inning score and then scored the second innings ball by ball. But other than that, I can't really work out why you need that. So score ball by ball. And then it will ask you for the strike batter. Now, often I find myself sitting next to a scorer and I'll say, who are your opening batsmen? And they'll say, oh, it's Ricky Wessels and Hamish Rutherford. And they'll say, but I don't know who's on strike. Now you can wait, but to be honest, you can change it once it's in there. So I would always say, get the information down in front of you. So I'm gonna put, I don't even know whether these people are batsmen, but they're going into bat anyway. Um, so I've put my two opening batsmen in for Essex. And now I'm gonna put 
oh no sorry they were Worcestershire ones now I'm going to put a bowler in again they might say I'm not sure who the opening bowler is but again you can always change it so I do know that he's a bowler so I'm going to put those in okay and then really that's the point at which the umpire should be waving to you saying scorers are you ready to go and you say yes we're all ready to go so I'm assuming that you're all still with me it's quite strange talking to a load of black screens but I'm assuming you're all there um, so this is the point at which we would start the game does anyone have any questions up to here anyone nice. have any questions? Go, go well so far Maxi. going well fabulous <laughs> so um, yeah so at this point you'd hope that the information's correct um, if, for example, when your um, person sitting next to you said, I'm not sure who's going to go on strike, you've put Ricky on strike and found out that actually Hamish is facing the first ball. These little three dots next to their names are really useful. So if you click on Hamish, you can change the strike and it will then put him on strike. So you can toggle between the two batsmen, which really you should only have to do at, if you make a mistake at the start of the game. And... The only other time is if you sort of make a mistake um, with uh, have they crossed after a run out or something um, or if they run one short. But we'll go through that as the game goes on. OK, so we've got Hamish on strike. He's actually facing the first ball and we're going to bowl our first over, which they bowl a dot. And it's really this straightforward. You press the dot and you click OK. And then the dot appears in the right hand column there and that's your first ball the second ball they bowl another dot and it just keeps your tab of what's going on there then the third ball is a two they run two so you click on the two and off you go and you can see that it adds two to the score there you'll also notice that hamish is still on strike because the the program works out that they ran two so he's back to where he started then they run a one and what you'll notice now is that Ricky is now on strike because it's worked out that he's now at the other end. Then you've got a dot. And then finally they run a one. And that then, it knows that you've bowled an over. It tells you that the over went two dots, two, one, dot, one. There's four runs in total from the over, four runs off the bowler. Ravi Bapara's bowling figures are now one over, no maidens, four runs, no wickets. Ricky scored one off two balls and Hamish has scored three off four balls. After one over, the score is four for none. Now, I would always check this with your fellow scorer before you end the over. Um, I'll show you why in a minute. Um, so check it, check that they agree whether they're scoring on the iPad or on another device or whether they're scoring in a book we always tend to run through these figures at the end of every over. It's just really good practice. It means that you don't make mistakes. And if you do make mistakes, it's easy to rectify them. Um, so end the over. The reason you want to check it before you end the over is now what happens is you get a massive screen with your next bowlers on and it obliterates all of the information. You can't even see the score. So if you're trying to then look back with the other um, scorer and saying, oh, I don't really know, you can't see anything so then you have to wait till you know who the next bowler is so double check with your scorer that you you kind of add things up before you move on so now um tom wesley's going to bowl and over okay you've still got ravi bopara's score there but now tom wesley is in the blue he's the one that is bowling ricky wessels is on strike it's worked out that obviously the um bowling's bowling from the other end and now the next over is a dot ball to start. Okay, and then the next ball, the second ball of the over, the umpire signals a wide. They don't run, the ball's just bowled wide. So you press the wide button. It really is very straightforward. The first time you do this, it will only do it once. It will check that you've got the wide and no ball values incorrect because once you've done this, you can't change them. So just double check that yes, you're playing a game where they're worth one run, okay? And then you just continue the scoring. So I'll say, is it one wide? You say yes, and you'll see on your list that they've added a wide to the score and one to the total. You'll also see that now your extras that are under Hamish's name 
there's now one wide. Okay, the next ball is a dot. Then there's a one. Then they run a four. Now, then the next ball is a wide, but they actually run on the wide. So this is counts as two wides, one for the actual wide ball that's bold and one for the run. So you click on now two and it will go down as two wides. And you say, yes, it's two. It will also work out that the strike has changed because they've ran a one. Okay, and then finally they run a two. Okay. Now you think, oh, that's the last ball of the over. You look up, they've changed, or the umpire's called over and they've started to change ends. You'll think, well, hang on a minute. There's been two wides bowled in that over. I've still got one ball to come. And surprisingly, this happens quite a lot, even with um, experienced umpires, that they lose count in the middle of an over. And I often get the question of, well, what do we do? And actually the rules state that you have to do what the umpires say. So the umpires are called over. Sometimes they ask and they say how many balls are left. Um, the umpires are called over. So actually you have to go with what they've said. You shouldn't really be shouting from the scoring table saying, oh, there's one ball left. Um, so you just have to end the over. So at the bottom here, next to where it says wicket, you have got a button to end the over early. It says, are you sure you wish to end the over? Only five legal balls have been bowled and you say yes and it will just end the over for you um it doesn't happen very much but there is a way to do it and it's just worth noting that down that you can end an over even if the kind of ipad doesn't work out that you should um as i say it happens more often than you think that the umpires lose count um okay so i'm going to go back to ravi bopara he's going to bowl another over so the score's now 14 for none Okay, so we've done wide, really. We've covered now how to add in sort of dot balls and runs, how to add in wides, and how to end an over if the umpires end it early um, before they should do. Okay, so the next over, um, we're going to add in a few more extras. So the first ball is a buy. So again, it is really straightforward. You just press the buy button. They just run one. It will default to one. So you don't have to press the one. You can just press the tick and it will just add in one buy. Okay, now the next ball um, is a wicket. So you press the wicket button. Now, the first thing to work out is, is the batter out Ricky Wessels? It will, by default, put the strike batter out. Well, yes, it was, because this batter was bold. So Ricky Wessels is out, he was bold. Okay, you click on done. It doesn't need any more information than that. It knows that nothing else could have happened. He was bowled out. He was on strike. He's out. You click on done. It gives you the option to confirm that. So I would always confirm that's the case. And then it will ask you who's your next batter going in. Okay. So you've now got a list of the remaining players that can go in. It doesn't matter what order they're in. So when you put them in, you don't have to put them in in the batting order. You can put them in any order. Just select the player and then put them into bat. Okay, so now you've got Moeen on zero and Hamish on um, seven. It knows that Moeen's going in on strike because it was the batter who was bowled out. Okay, and then first ball is a dot. Then there's a two. Okay, then he bowls a no ball. And with the no ball, the batter misses it but they run two. It was a dreadful delivery. Okay, so you click on no ball. Now that's classed, if the batter doesn't hit it, it's classed as two buys. The wicket keepers don't get very happy about this, but you click on no ball, then because he didn't hit it, you then click on buy, and it's actually no ball and two buys. So I'll just do that again. You click on no ball, then you click on buy, and then you click on two to say it was actually two buys. And what that will do is it'll add three to the total, one for the no ball and two for the buys that were given there. Okay. Then there is two balls left of the over still to come. So there's a one. And then the last ball of the over is a dot. 
Okay, so at the end of the over here, you can see it was quite an eventful over. We had a buy, then a wicket, then a dot, the two, a noble and two buys, a one and a dot. So seven runs in total off the bowler, or seven runs in total off the over, only five to the bowler. Um, Ravi Bopar's figures are now two overs, no maidens, eight runs, one wicket. Hamish is on seven off seven, Moeen's on three off four, and the score's 21 for one. And again, check that with the other scorer. So you end the over there. Okay, Wesley's going to bowl again. Okay. Then this over, there's a one. Okay, now this probably wouldn't happen in a professional game, but the child who's just come out, got out, then comes up to you and goes, what did I score? And you're in the middle of scoring, but you feel like you need to give them that option. So their scores disappeared from the sheet. If you've got someone with a book next to you, tell them, send them to that person because I'll have it written down. But in the top right hand corner, you have three dots. So while you tend to say to, I tend to just say to child, give me a sec, especially if there's a dot, not a lot's happening. Press the three dots and I can view and edit the scorecard. So if I view the scorecard, I can go back and say, little Ricky, you scored four runs off seven balls. Okay, so that's how to go back and sort of see what's happened because invariably the children will come up to you and say, after they've got out, they'll soon appear at the desk saying, what did they score? Okay, so you just use the three dots in the top and that tells you how um, sort of go to the score sheet. So then you're back on back in the game, probably by now you've got about three balls, but anyway. Um, luckily it's two dots. So there's a dot and another dot. And then the next ball is a wicket. Now this time your non-striking batsman has been run out. So again, it will automatically select your strike batsman. If you change that to the non-strike batsman, it will work out that the only way that person can be dismissed is either being run out or by obstructing the field or if they've retired. So usually I've never put anyone out any other way. So they're run out. Then this time you have to say the fielder. So the fielder is the person who threw the ball in um, either to the wicketkeeper or directly at the stumps or the bowler. So this fielder, choose anyone, was this person here. The fielder assists. So if they threw it into the wicketkeeper and the wicketkeeper took the bails off, that's the assist. So you'd put your wicketkeeper in there. Now, did they cross? Now, I always tend to miss this or I just sort of ignore it because sometimes it's really difficult to know whether they've crossed, particularly if it's a catch. Um, but you can work it out and you can change a strike accordingly. So obviously if they crossed and it was a non-striking batsman who was out and they'd crossed, okay, the new batsman will go in at the striker's end. If they hadn't crossed, the new batsman will go in at the non-striker's end. And so um, it's quite important that you then look and see, have you got the correct batsman or bat I shouldn't say batsman, should I say should batter, especially as I'm the girls. Um, manager so the batter on strike you need to check that you've got the correct one so in this way i'm going to say that they've crossed so it's a run out and therefore i'm now going to put in ed and it will work out that ed is on strike now if you've done something wrong and ed's not on strike you can just use these three dots and you can change the strike between them okay um so ed faces first ball it's a leg by and it goes for two, they run two with a leg by, puts it on there, and then he gets going and tees off and scores a six. Okay, so at the end of the over, the score's 30 for two, and that's the end of the over. Um, I'm gonna put someone else into bowl. It doesn't really matter who you're putting in. And this is the final over of the game. Okay, so I'm going to go through and we'll sort of um, just kind of summarize some of the things that we've just done. So the first ball is a no ball, but this time he hits it for four. So it's not a buy, it's a no ball and four runs. So that you don't have to press anything, you press no ball and then press the four and it will be no ball and four runs. So again, it will add five to the total, but this time it will give one as a no ball and then it will give the four runs to the batter. Okay, 
Then there's a dot, then there's a three, then there's a one. Ooh. Okay, so I put a dot in there, but actually it was a one. I noticed it before I um, put it in. So I just press the cross and that lets me go back. If I put the dot in and click the tick and then realized it was a one, I can just press this blue undo button here. Um, it looks like the kind of back button and I can just go back. So that's a really important button there. Okay, and then I just put the one in. So the blue undo button there. Um, just as we think we're almost getting to the end of the game, there's a wicket. Hamish is stumped. It automatically puts in the wicket keeper. Um, but if you've got more than one, you can toggle and put in another wicket keeper. Um, so it will automatically select one of your wicket keepers. Um, you can toggle and put the other one in there. Um, it knows that there's not going to be assist and it knows that they can't cross. So then you put done. Add in another bower batter. And finally, there's a dot and then a four. Okay. And that is the end of the over. There, the score should be 43 for three. And it now says, because we told it, it was a five over match, it now says um, five overs are in bold. Do you wish to close the innings? And so we're going to say yes. Okay. And hopefully you should have a score of 4343 three on there. Um, you can go use those three dots at the top to view and edit the scorecard. If you want to, so you can go and see, you can check your bowling figures. That's a really good idea with someone, especially if they're using a book, they quite like you to just read out that, those figures for them so they don't have to check them. Um, and yeah, um, the information's all on there. It will count up the extras for you. And that's all there. Okay. Um, sometimes if you're scoring live, it's quite a good idea at this point to click on match actions and say you're having a break, um, but you don't have to do that. Um, it's just if someone's looking and they'll think, oh, nothing's been updated for a while, you can do that there. Um, before I go on to the second innings where we just look at basically making a few more mistakes and how to correct them, is there any questions from anyone? Before we move can you on? just tell me about that match actions thing? Can we take a break? I just missed that last part, please, Maxine. So if, um, so if it doesn't really matter unless you're scoring live, really. So if you're scoring live and people are watching it and they're thinking, well, actually nothing's happened for a little bit, you can click on match actions and you can do things like say, I'm we're taking a break. And it will say, well, what type of break are you taking? You're saying, well, actually it's tea. And then um, what they'll yeah. do is when they look at the live thing, they'll see that the match has been paused for tea. So they kind of will not worry that it's not updating. Um, so you can you don't have to use it at all, um, but it's just there as a function, and then you just resume the match when you want to. Cool, thank okay. you. Um, um, Ma oh. Ma Maxine, um, yeah, forgive me, if I'm I'm still quite sure. novice here, but no balls if there's a free hit. Yeah, so it makes zero difference to you as a scorer. It's only what the umpires will do. So you as a scorer would score it as any other ball. Um, it, it's just the extra ball. It only makes the difference that the umpires won't give them out if they're caught or bowled or stumped. Okay, so, but, but will there be a... Because these no balls that we've scored in here hasn't given an extra ball in that over, has it? Yeah, it has. Has it? Okay. Yeah. So um, all, the, all the extras, so the wide and no balls have put an extra ball into the over. So we've had seven balls in the over. Okay. So um, we'll go. We'll do one in a minute, and you can see that it will say, um, like it will say, ball number one point four. Let's say um, was a no ball, and then the next ball will also be called one point four. Okay. Um, so it will do that. So yeah, th there's no way of you telling the iPad it was a free hit because it doesn't need to know that. It doesn't affect the scoring at all. It just affects what the umpires do on the pitch um, okay. if they're out. Okay. okay. So if we start a new innings at the bottom of the screen, you'll see that you should now have new innings button and you'll kind of go back to really where almost where we started. So again, you select the strike batsman 
Um, those two have done a bit. I'm going to start them at the bottom. You can put anyone in you want. Um, and I'm going to have a bowler there. Um, again, it doesn't really matter who you put in because you can make changes as you go. Right. Okay. Um, so the first over, we're going to do a dot and another dot and a two and a dot and a four. Right. And then this time you look up and you see that the um, umpires have called over and you're like, oh, I've only got five balls. And you speak to the scorer sitting next to you and you say, oh, I've only got five balls that over. And they say, well, no, I had six. And so you're like, ah, oh, something went wrong. Maybe you were still eating your sandwiches or just coming back from doing some shoelaces up or something. And um, you realize that you've missed a ball. Now, when you speak to the scorer, they say, well, actually this sc my score went dot, 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 two, dot, four. And you're like, ah, oh, I missed a ball at the start of the innings. There's ways in which you can do it. Um, to be honest, I would, in my, the easiest way is just to use this undo button, that blue undo button, and just put in an extra dot and then go back and just check and just say, yes, then it was two, then it was dot, then it was four. So you can do it that way, or um, I'm just gonna go back and show you another way. I wouldn't really, it, I just find this way a lot, it takes a lot longer. And the thing that happens, especially in junior cricket is that um, it tends to go quite quickly. But the plus button at the top right hand corner, where it says over one, six runs, six for zero, there's then a plus button, you can add a ball in. So you can add, if you press the plus button, Okay, you need to work out who the strike batter was, and then the bowler would be the same bowler. And actually, you say it was ball number three I missed. Okay, it will then work out the strike batter for you and say it was Sam, bowlers Charlie, score type runs. Well, it wasn't any runs, but that's what it was. And you click in done, and then it will add that third ball in for you. So you can do it that way, that is an option. But I, I do think it's quicker to just use that undo, the blue undo button and go back. But it is an option for you there, particularly if there's been quite a lot that's gone on the over, let's say a wicket's fallen and all sorts of things, then um, yeah, you can, you can go and add in balls that way. So that's just quite useful to know. You can also edit balls. If you go back and you think, actually that wasn't a dot, it was a one. So if the first ball of the over, you were still eating your sandwiches was actually a one. You can go back and edit it that way by pressing the little pencil next to it. Um, so if I now end the over, and then I'm gonna select another bowler there, okay? So if I now want to go back and say, actually that first ball was a one, if I click on the little pencil next to the first balls, ball 0 0.1, okay, it says the score type is runs, Okay, and then I can toggle that up to one run and then I can click on done. Now, what it will say is, well, actually, if they ran the first ball, that's going to affect who was on strike for the rest of the over. And you're going to say, oh, yes, it does actually affect that. So you're going to say yes for the entire innings. Okay, I was wrong. It affected it. And then you'll find that it's updated. So rather than Sam Cook facing the first three balls, he now just faced the first one and then Aaron faced the next two. So you can actually go back and edit balls that way as well. Okay. Um, again, you can also press the undo button and go back and edit them that way. Um, it doesn't really matter. It makes no difference, but there is sort of two methods of doing it there. Okay. So we're now on the start of the second over and we're going to have two runs to start us off with. And then we've got a wicket. Now this wicket, what happens is they ran one and then they were run out trying to run the second um, run of the over, or sorry, second run from the ball. 
So you do it in the order in which it happens. So you press one because they only scored one run. So they scored one run, Aaron hit it. They scored one run, then there was a wicket. So then you press wicket. Okay, Aaron was run out coming back for the second run and he was run out. Again, it will work out that because they've scored one run, he can't have been bowled, he can't have been caught. There are only certain methods of dismissals. So he was run out, okay, and just choose a fielder. Maybe the wicketkeeper ran him out. No one assisted it. They did a cross attempting the second run. Okay, and so it will tell you this time that there's a wicket, which is a run out, plus they got one run. So it'll add one to the total, but it will also add the wicket on there. Okay, then I'm going to put someone else in. Okay, so you tend to do things in the order in which they happen on the field. So because they ran the one first, you put the one run in first, and then you put the wicket in. Okay, next ball is a dot. And then there is a wide, which is so wide, it goes for four runs. Okay, so everyone misses it. It goes off the back for four runs. So I'm gonna press wide and I'm gonna press four. And it's gonna say, is that a wide and four runs, as in five wides, or is it four wides? Okay, so I'm gonna say, well, actually it's five wides because it was one for the wide and the four runs. So it's a wide and four runs, which is five wides. Or I could just press wide and I can press five that way and it will put it down as five wide. You can do it either way. It is exactly the same. There's just two ways of doing that. Um, then I've got a dot and then a one and then a leg by. Okay. And we're busy now um, writing everything down. We're talking, saying, yeah, I've got 17 for one. We all agree on everything. And we look up and we find that uh, Ben Cox is running in to bowl their seventh ball of the over. So the umpires have lost count this time the wrong way. So this time I'm going to continue the over. And I always feel really bad as a scorer here, especially when it's little children. I just think I really hope there's not a wicket or boundary on this ball because you feel really sorry that there's an extra ball that shouldn't be there. And um, yeah, and if it's a wicket, you just feel like you feel so sorry for the child and don't ever tell them that they were bowled out on the seventh ball of the over because they will be really upset. Um, but luckily it's just a dot. And then finally the over is gonna end. So if they bowl an extra ball for any reason, which happens as much as they bowl two fewer balls, then you just continue the over, okay? So I just find that it is really intuitive and it will let you do pretty much anything that you need to do there, okay? Um, there's not too much more to go through with you. Um, as I say, you just, you just need to get used to playing it. But this over, we're going to go for a four to start off the over and then a dot and then a dot. And then we've got something that you don't see happen very often, but a wide ball is bowled and there is a stumping off the wide ball. So um, again, you do it in the order in which it's happened. So the wide ball is bowled, but then there is a wicket and it's the batsman who's out and he's out stumped. And again, it works out that there's not a lot else that can happen. Um, there's not too many ways you can get out from a wide. You can be run out, but the stumping's off the wide. They can't obviously run. And so that happens there. Puts it out there. I'm gonna put this person in. So again, intuitively, you do it the order in which it happened. The wide ball is bowled first and then the wicket comes second. Um, if you press wicket first, it won't let you then add the wide in afterwards. Um, and then we've got a dot ball and a one to finish that over. Oh no, sorry, another one to finish the over because of the wide. Okay, so... Um, Someone. Sorry, sorry, Maxine, sorry to interrupt you. If for instance you get the wrong thing on the um how the um wicket was out, maybe it was run out rather than stumped or whatever. Yep. Assuming you can pencil on the side there, can you to change yeah. that? Yeah, so if I just um end the over there, I'll just put the next bowler in. Um 
So yeah, if you use the pencil there, um, you can look at the dismissal type and actually you can change it so that he was run out there. Yep. And things like if you don't know the catcher at the time, that's quite often a case that you don't know who caught it. You just leave that blank. And then if later you find out that the catcher was um, so-and-so, you can edit that ball and put the name of the catcher in. So that's quite a good, um, that is quite a useful use of the button because you might not find that out until, I don't know, maybe one of their players comes off the field and like, oh, who caught that ball? And they'll say, oh, it was, I don't know, Fred. And so you'll then put his name in there so you can edit balls. That's quite a good use of that edit button there is to sort of put in a catcher there. So yeah, you can change things. Um, that works well. Now, while you were trying to change it, I just put in a bowler because I couldn't do anything until I just put a bowler in, but actually it's not Ben Cox who's bowling at all. It's someone else. So I just go to change the bowler and actually Moeen's gonna have a bowl and I then put him in. So you can, if you need to see the screen, just put anyone down to bowl and then go back and change the bowler afterwards by using those three dots. Um, so we've got two more overs to go. We'll rattle through them quite quickly. There's a two and then there's a six. And then Paul Walter has now scored 10 and that's the value that they're going to retire him on. So I'm going to click on Paul Walter and I'm going to change the batter and I'm going to change it to someone else. He hasn't done anything this game. And it asks me why I'm changing it. Now, Usually you're retiring them not out because maybe um, it's a junior game and the um, managers decided that, or the coaches decided that they're going to retire them on a certain amount. So usually you retire them not out. If you change it due to an error, it could be that you put the wrong batsman in and you need to change it there. Um, so I'm going to retire him not out. And then it's put my next batsman in there. Uh, where are we? Sorry. Two, six, dot dot um one and then well you can do whatever you want me really, two and that's the end of the over so on 35 for two and i'm gonna have he hasn't rolled it now at the top this is quite useful as the matches are getting quite tight where you see it says worcestershire rapids and essex eagles it will say essex eagles require nine runs from six balls so that's often quite um um Good. I mean, the math is easy at the moment, but um, yeah, that's quite a good sort of information to have up there. There, okay. Now, in this over, the first run they run two. Okay. Now you're busy putting two in. You're very happy with the two that you've put in, and then you look up because the umpires are shouting and they're going scorers, scorers, and they're going like this, and you're like, oh. And what that means is that they've run one short, and it doesn't very happen very often at professional level, but it does happen a lot at junior level that they don't grind grind ground their bat at the other end as they're turning round and so what happens there they ran from the striker's end to the non-striker's end and back again but they didn't put their bat in at one end and so they just score one run so the quickest way to do it is to undo that and just put in a one but what that then does take into account is that ryan is back on strike um, so I just need to change the strike. So that's quite a good use for that. If they run one short, you don't need to tell it it's one short. There's no way of telling the iPad they've run one short. Um, you just put in one run and then you just change the strike back to who it was. Okay. Um, then there's a four. It's getting quite close now. They need four from four balls. They bowl a dot. And then lastly, he hits a six. OK, so with two balls to go, they have now passed the score of the Worcestershire Rapids and therefore the match has ended. So it'll say, do you wish to end the match? And you'll click on OK. And then the match will end. Now, in a junior game, it may be that you decide actually you're going to play on. And so you just click no, you don't want to end the match and it will let you just carry on as usual. Um, so that's quite useful for a junior game. But often you just need to check with the... Um, both the managers that um, they do want it scoring because often they say, well, no, actually finish scoring the match, but we'll just carry on playing anyway. Um, because you can't end a match halfway through if you've kind of gone on to score it to the end. So often what I'll do is I'll finish the match and then I'll just get a piece of paper out and just carry on adding scores up. 
and that sort of thing because the match is officially finished so if you are going to carry on once you've surpassed a score you need to know whether you are going to carry on scoring properly or whether you just want them to keep scoring um just sort of informally really so people know how much they've scored okay because you can't retrospectively go back and sort of say oh actually the match finished then i'm going to stop scoring um so you'll come up with this screen which says you've now edit the scores and scorecard once submitted you'll still see this but you'll not be able to change the scores or results so you click on okay and then you'll see the scorecards there and this is again quite useful to go through with the opposition scorer just to check you've all got the same figures you can go back and see the first innings as well so that's your scorecard okay and really that's um the point to get to now this um if you're scoring live the game will still be in progress at this point even though you said oh the match has finished to actually officially end the match you have to click on this end match button and that is where it will depend on how you're scoring as to what you do if you are scoring live and you have an internet connection you'll finalize the result if you're not you have to save it and exit it and then you have to finalize it and you've got an internet connection you can only finalize the result with an internet connection so if you click on finalize the result it then asks you well what was the outcome of the match i'm not sure why it just can't work that out but anyway the outcome of the match is that the Worcestershire Rapids lost and then you click on done okay and it will upload the match and it will finalize it onto play cricket um, if you haven't got an internet connection you have to save and exit it and then you then when you get an internet connection then have to go in and finalize the result there okay. so that's how you score a whistle top a whistle stop um, sorry, very quick, um, how to score. But I do think the best way to learn is just to do it and is just to do it again and again and again. It is very intuitive. All the information is there for you. Um, and you can always go back and you can make changes to things. Um, and they have made that a lot better. There used to be lots of um, reasons why you couldn't go back. So if you were uploading it live, as soon as you finish an over, you couldn't then go back and change that over. It was a nightmare. Um, also, if you put someone out, you couldn't get them back in, but they have adapted all that. You can pretty much undo anything. So don't be scared of it because you can just undo it. Um, I would never just have, even I'm quite confident with it and I've used it for many, many years. I would never, if it was just me scoring on my own, I would never rely on the iPad alone just because if it does go wrong, you're already stuck. So if I'm scoring on my own, I'll always have the iPad and a book. Um, but if I'm scoring with someone else, then I just use the iPad. I don't use the book anymore, even though I love my colored pens. So my advice is really just to go for it and have a go and just practice and don't be scared, as I say, because you can just undo things. Um, there is always help out there. Um, so you can all sort of ask the iPad for help. How do I do this? Um, but really everything is there in front of you. And as long as you do things in the order in which they happen, you can't really go wrong. Okay. If you've ended the, if you've ended the match yeah. and then sort of says, oh, but I caught that with the, the one you'd left blank, can you go back in and... Yeah, so, um, you know, it said so once you've submitted this information, you can't go back and edit it. Mm -hmm. You can, but you have to go into Play Cricket itself. So the manager has access to Play Cricket online and he can then go in, once that score's been uploaded, he can then go in and put in the score, put in the catchers um, and that sort of thing. So- um, Is that when you finalised it or when, is that when you just ended and saved and exited? Yeah, so if you save and exit, then depending on how it, when you bring it back up and how quickly it sort of ca catches the internet connection, often it will just upload it straight away. Um, sometimes you can go in but i think once you've saved it and exited the best way to change things is actually to change it on play cricket itself rather than change it on the ipad yeah um okay, thank you. that's yeah that would be my advice there um you can add them in there or the opposition can add them in from their side because they'll be able to do it from play cricket okay yep thank you